ChatGPT recently got silently updated, bringing one of the coolest features ever. And no one's really talking about it. I'm telling you, this update could be the next big step for the platform. So let's take a look at everything that has changed. First off, a special toggle has been added that basically disables the memory for ChatGPT. Here's why this is important. Typically, when you're conversing with ChatGPT, it records everything, all the messages, all the responses, and all the things it does, and sends it all to the servers. Later, this information is used to train and improve the model. But here's the kicker. You've probably noticed that in recent months, ChatGPT has gotten worse. I've been noticing it for quite some time, and the cases when I switched to the GPT 3.5 are now much more common than I would have wanted. All thanks to those millions of requests that ChatGPT processes every day. Some of those requests are poorly prompted or are completely nonsensical. So all this confusing information gets absorbed by the system, changing the way the model operates. With the option to disable this memory, we could preserve the quality of the responses regardless of how nonsensical or dumb our requests are. Here's how to do it. Open settings, data controls, and turn off chat history and training. Here, it says in the description, save new chats on this browser to your history and allow them to be used to improve our models. Unsaved chats will be deleted from our systems within 30 days. A more simpler version will sound like this. While history is disabled, new conversations won't be used to train and improve the models and won't appear in the history sidebar. To monitor for potential violations, all conversations will be retained for 30 days before getting permanently deleted. So if you are someone who makes a lot of strange requests and doesn't know how to prompt properly, it might be a good decision to turn off the history to not mess up things for the people who actually use ChatGPT for work and rely on the consistency of its responses. It won't affect the way the model operates for you either. You just won't have these chats in the history of your account. I am definitely turning this memory off for all the situations when I'm about to ask ChatGPT to generate me a poem about cat robots. So as you see, I'm using the desktop version of ChatGPT, but I found a way to use it everywhere, right from the keyboard. Type AI is a ChatGPT powered keyboard extension app that works seamlessly on any platform or app on my phone. It helps fix spelling, grammar, can translate stuff on the spot and even reply to messages automatically. Plus, it can finish up what I'm writing, paraphrase things, up the words, or even change the whole tone of the text. Whether I want my messages to be more formal or more friendly, I can just pick the tone and the AI will rewrite the message for me. I find it super convenient when writing emails, I can just draft my version of the email and then have AI rewrite everything to be spotless and perfect. I can type the commands for the AI right in the document, like ask it for essay, and then I can just apply the suggested text. And that built-in paraphrasing, it's just the best. Just a couple clicks and my mess of a message becomes coherent and easily read. Type AI is one of the most used apps now, so be sure to try it too. Click the link in the description box below for a free trial of Type AI Premium version. Oh, and thanks Type AI for sponsoring this video. Tell me, do you remember GPTs? Yes, those little GPT models that we trained for specific tasks in earlier videos. Back then, I called them the biggest addition to ChatGPT ever. This statement still holds up to this day. No, seriously, these GPTs open new possibilities and allow everyone to create a custom model just for their needs, trained on their data, and perfectly tailored for particular tasks. Creating such a model isn't all that difficult, and we have a detailed video about that, so be sure to check it out. This process is actually quite accessible. Our video guides you through each step. Also, in one of the recent videos, we've tested a couple great GPTs from the GPT store, so if you're looking for cool GPT models, watch that too. We dove deep into their features and found out how these models can be applied to real-world scenarios, making you more productive and creative. Anyhow, that's exactly where the biggest ChatGPT update is. Now I can access any GPT right from the chat at any moment in time. All I have to do is type add the right symbol. Yeah, this one. After this symbol, I can just pick the one I want from the list of suggested ones. However, there is a certain way to do it because not all GPTs from the store can be accessed this way. The list of the suggested GPTs show only the most recently used models, the ones I used the past days. So the custom GPT you want to use must be
be saved in your history and it must be accessed recently. For example, if you've opened a certain GPT model a few months ago and since then have tried dozens of other GPTs, then you will need to search for that GPT in the store and start a chat with it just to have it saved in the history. And only then you can access it from any chat by calling it out. Let's say I want to call out the GPT that draws coloring books that we've looked at in one of our videos. Since it's not on our list of the suggested GPTs, I'm going to open the store, find it, and initiate a chat with it. Now I will go back to my chat and boom, it's there, ready to be summoned. Now let's look at how all this summoning works. Here I have an empty chat opened. I will just type in the add sign and choose the GPT model that we created in one of our videos. Next, I'm gonna ask it to tell me about a couple AI tools, then just as I expected, AI Master generated a pretty solid answer. <laughs> but I'm going to ask it to elaborate and give me a step-by-step -step guide for one of the AI tools. Now, if I want to stop working with this particular GPT, I can just press on the X sign. This will release the custom GPT and from that moment on, I'm gonna be talking to the regular GPT-4. Until I summon another custom GPT, of course, it's very easy to see which GPT I'm working with. It says here chat GPT when I'm working with chat GPT and it says a master when I'm working with my own GPT. Just look how seamlessly the information from one GPT model flows into another one. Now my chat has combined power of GPT-4 and the custom GPT model that I call out. They basically share the same memory and chat history. What's even more interesting is that now I can connect multiple GPTs and they will actually talk to each other. Now instead of starting a separate chat for every custom GPT, I can do everything from one single chat by just calling out different GPT models when I need them. I can combine two, three, or even five GPT models in one chat and have all the information seamlessly flow between them. The response from one GPT model can be used by another model. This synergy between models open up a new realm of possibilities where the output of one model enhances the, the input of another, leading to more refined and accurate responses. This is the way it should have worked from the start. And now let's check this all out. I'm going to start a clean chat and summon the GPT that writes engaging texts. Then I'm gonna ask it to write a short and friendly article about the AI going rogue and conquering the world. It takes some time to process everything, but eventually after half a minute of waiting, I get my article and it looks quite good. It's reasonably interesting, but written in a typical AI fashion. But I'm not going to dwell on that and the specifics of why this text just screams AI. I'm going to summon the second custom GPT that was specifically designed to work with SEO and optimize the articles for the search engines. I'm going to ask it to create a list of keywords for this text. And would you look at that? 25 keywords are done and dusted, ready to be put in the text. So I'm just gonna ask the same GPT to embed the keyword into the text. Check it out, it even highlighted each keyword, making it super easy for me to see how the keywords are used. I think I'm gonna hold on to this custom GPT. The only downside to this custom GPT that I have noticed is this plethora of links and text after the response. I know it's easy to ignore all that, but still. Now let's say I want to turn this text into a song. I'm gonna set this GPT free and then summon another one. This AI song maker will then be tasked with turning this SEO text into a song. In the first round, it only gave a rough structure of the song without the actual lyrics. So I'm gonna remind it about the task on hand and additionally ask for the MIDI file. As it generates the lyrics, I can already see that it did use quite a few keywords from the ones suggested by different GPT and the lyrics follow the text quite nicely. And there is the MIDI file ready to be imported into the dedicated software. Now let's say I want to finish things off with a few images. So I'm gonna summon another GPT and ask it to generate an image that will go along with the lyrics. After a few seconds of waiting, here's the image number one and here is image number two. What do you think? It's kind of similar to plugins, but better. With plugins, we had the limitation of only three plugins per chat. With custom GPTs, there's no such limitations, and the GPTs themselves can be trained and have much greater functionality than your typical plugins. Add to it the fact that creating a plugin is much more difficult and demanding than training the custom GPT. Again, you can find the video about training the custom GPT on the channel. Now, basically anyone can build complicated workflows in seconds, save a ton of time doing it, 
and be more productive as a result. Just think of all the things you could do with these GPTs. Even now, when the developers weren't designing their GPTs to work in tandem, the results are fantastic. Think how well it will work when all the GPTs will be by default optimized to work with one another. Maybe I would be able to summon a couple of GBTs to work on one prompt and they will constantly talk to each other, share information, and as a result, give something fantastic. I think with enough persistence, some people could even fully automate their work and eventually they get paid for basically doing nothing. This is one of the coolest and most exciting ChatGPT features that I've seen, and it's definitely worth exploring. On top of all that, ChatGPT has also become faster. As Sam Altman puts it, much less lazy. This has been a long recurring problem of ChatGPT refusing to complete a task of providing uninformative, short answers. I've seen that many times when I was asking ChatGPT to write me something long and get in a three sentence text in response. It's hard to pinpoint why this issue existed, but if Sam Altman is right, now the model should operate perfectly fine. Unfortunately, this laziness and sluggishness isn't something that I can easily show you because it doesn't happen all the time. However, even in day-to-day -day work, I am already noticing that some responses take less time to process than before, and I, I like that. I think that the speed of processing is something that OpenAI has to work on if they wanna make ChatGPT5 the greatest AI to ever exist. And I think Sam Altman would not settle for anything less than that. What should we expect? from GPC-5. I think the latest update in Sam Altman's claims kind of hint at the future update. It's like they've been following this playbook where they start off with some quiet behind the scenes action, testing small things out, small scale. Last year we got GPTs, plugins, and a ton of other quality of life improvements. This year it has already gotten faster and now can work with multiple GPT models in one chat. And I think all these changes are small scale tests and the GPT-5 will take all things that GPT-4 does and take them to another level. Yet, yeah, despite people's excitement, OpenAI has been somewhat tight-lipped about the specifics, leading to it being impossible to predict anything based on a mix of official announcements, expert speculations, and community expectations. As of the latest updates, OpenAI has hinted at a release of GPT-5, possibly within the 2024 timeframe, although specific dates remain unconfirmed. This follows the trend of rapid development scene with previous models where GPT-4 was launched just a few months after GPT-3.5. One of the most anticipated aspects of GPT-5 is its potential to take strides toward achieving artificial general intelligence, AGI, a level of machine intelligence that mimics the flexibility and learning capabilities of human intelligence. Although some early reports suggest GPT-5 could reach AGI, most experts, including those from OpenAI, believe true AGI is still several years away. From a technical standpoint, GPT-5 is expected to bring substantial improvements over GPT-4, including enhanced performance and efficiency. Many devs and users have noted the need for GPT-5 to offer faster response times and more cost-effective usage to encourage widespread adoption. This is especially important for the energy enterprise environments, aka big projects, big companies, where GPT-4 has faced criticism for its slow responses compared to GPT-3.5. While GPT-4 introduced multimodal input, text and images, GPT-5 is expected to incorporate a broader range of data types, including audio, video, and potentially other sensory inputs. We've already seen glimpses into what AI can really do with Google's Gemini, and such a future looks fantastic. A more plausible change in GPT-5 could be the long-term memory capabilities, greatly expanding the context length it can handle. This improvement would enable more sophisticated interactions such as maintaining extended conversations or remembering user preferences over time. It would be really nice to have ChatGPT's history and specific chats going back years. Just think how well could you train the model if the memory was that huge. We will surely get many more options to train custom GPTs, enabling them to access special frameworks or something like that. Think of the AI learning not only from the text files and images you upload, but also from screen recordings, videos, music, and so on. Now imagine combining everything into one package. Let's say you are software developer. Right now, there are different AI tools that help with coding, testing, and so on. Imagine teaching ChatGPT to do it for you. You'd have one custom GPT that's gonna write with the code, another one to check it for mistakes, then another one to do all the testing, 
And then one more for the optimization, all working seamlessly together with just one prompt from you. I know it sounds like a fairy tale, but I'm sure that's where it's all going. On the one hand, it makes me kind of scared, but on the other hand, I'm really excited. This whole GPT-5 saga isn't just about making a smarter chatbot. It's about pushing the envelope on how we interact with machines. Imagine having a chat with an AI that's not just repeating stuff it's learned, but actually understands what's up in the world right now. Now that's game changing. It's not just about asking something and getting a by the book answer. It's about having a real conversation, getting insight, maybe even advice based on what's happening at the moment. But as cool as this all sounds, it's also a bit of a reality check. With all these smarts, we've got to think about keeping things under control. Privacy, making sure the AI is not stepping over the line, and keeping everything ethical are big deals that we have to figure out as we go. Hopefully OpenAI does all the work for us and save us from <laughs> that burden. I'm sure we'll see a ton of new and exciting features added to ChatGPT this year. Although I don't know for sure what we will see, I know that with each update, our life will get a bit easier. And of course, we're gonna continue testing everything and giving you the most detailed videos on the platform. Thanks for watching and see you soon.